Hello everyone, this is Paleo 101, and today we're going to be talking about the fossils in the paleontological history of Virginia. So let's get started. And so the oldest rocks in Virginia date back to around 1.8 billion years old. And this is likely due to the uh, destruction and the, building of, and the building of mountains. And so this is what the uh, Earth's continents were probably arranged like during the Precambrian era. And then we get into the middle section, we look at the Paleozoic. Um, majority of the rocks that were deposited during this time happened to be marine, so limestones and shales. But in the Carboniferous period, uh, we start to see a, co a coverage of swamps and uh, delta deltaic environments during this time. So we do find a lot of marine fossils as well as plant fossils within the Paleozoic. And then the last section here is the Mesozoic, and this is when Pangaea started to assemble um, Pangaea started to assemble during the late Paleozoic, so likely due to the carb during the Carboniferous period. And but we technically see Pangaea starting to assemble during that time, but we also see it in the Triassic, and then it started to really separate during the late Triassic to early Jurassic period. And we find an abundance of different types of fossils during the Triassic um, in the Triassic rocks of Virginia, including dinosaur trackways, and we find an abundance of plants and different types of reptilian-like creatures. Um, but we also start to see Cretaceous fossils that get deposited after the Jurassic and Triassic to early Jurassic rocks as well. Many of that, many of those sediments are actually deposited within these coastal marine environments or coastal environments. And then and then the sea levels rose and fell during the Cenozoic, so recent and recent time. And then once those it, you know, once and once those sediments were deposited, you see a variety of different organisms starting to inhabit those oceans um, once the sea level rose. And so you get a variety of different cetaceans and invertebrate life, and as well as a variety of sharks and fish. And so in order to really understand the geologic history of the paleontological history of Virginia, we have to really look at a geological map. Um, every single one of these colors represents a different time period. And every time period has its own different types of fossils and, or the different types of rocks. And so every color here that you see represents a time period, and those time periods have their own rocks and have their own fossils. And so just to give you a, an overview of the types of fossils that are found in Virginia, uh, let's start to let's start to look at some of the oldest rocks to the youngest sediment. So in the middle here where we see which has really old rocks that's going to be found in the Blue Ridge section. So that basically consists of rocks like granite, mices, schist, metamorphic and igneous rocks, rocks that aren't going to really have any fossils in them. And then for the Valley and Ridge section, that's where we start to see an abundance of fossils from the Paleozoic era. So things like brachiopods and trilobites, all of their Paleozoic fossils are going to be found here. And then we see in the Appalachian Plateau, we see Carboniferous fossils. So fossils that were likely due to the deposition of some of these deltaic swamps. And so we find a lot of plant fossils in that section. And then in the Triassic to early Jurassic rocks, we see are in the Piedmont section. So right in this middle section. So we see a lot of footprints of dinosaurs and other different types of reptiles that we'll get to in a moment here. Um, but we also see Cretaceous rocks that are probably found up in the, the, the upper section of the Piedmont region. And then the youngest fossils we start to see, or the youngest sediments we start to see is found in the coastal plains section or the Atlantic coastal plains. And so this is what Virginia likely looked like during the Paleozoic. Um, don't really have an, a, a, exactly the period um, in which this photo is from, but we find marine fossils from the Paleozoic as far back as the Cambrian, so around 500 million years. And so we find a variety of different types of marine fossils um, we find corals, we find brachiopods, we find gastropods, and we find crinoids, and we find cephalopods as well. So all of these various different organisms have been discovered or have been collected from the Paleozoic rocks of Virginia. And so we have a variety of different types of brachio, uh, diff I'm sorry, a variety of different types of fossils. But one of the most common fossils that you'll typically find in Paleozoic rocks, specifically from the Devonian, are brachiopods, and brachiopods are considered to be lamp shells. They're not clams, so their own thing. They belong to their own phylum. 
but they would have been attached by a fleshy stalk called a pedicle, and they would have been filter feeders. And so they had uh, specifically different types of filter feeding options that they could use inside of their shell. So they can open and close the shell, and they would use a filter feeding system called a lophophore to uh, grab organisms from the upper from the water column. And so we find a variety of different types of brachiopods. The most common brachiopod, brachiopods are the winged brachiopods called the sporiferids. And here's a slab of brachiopods from the Mahantico formation of Hayfield, Virginia from the Devonian period. We also find trilobites, one of my favorite fossils. Trilobites are common fossils that you'll typically find. Um, trilobites are actually common in pieces. Uh, finding a whole trilobite is actually quite rare in the Mahantico formation and in the Needmore formation, which is where this Eldridge Ops Rana trilobite comes from, uh, from West Virginia specifically. Uh, but trilobites have been found in the Paleozoic rocks and specifically the Devonian rocks in Virginia. We also find crinoids. So this is a slab of limestone with impressions of crinoids. So crinoids, some people may look at it and think they're likely plants, but they're not. They're actually animals, and they are part of the class Echinodermata. And so crinoids are actually echinoderms, so they're related to sea stars and things of that nature. And so they would have been attached to the seafloor with a long stalk, and those long stalks would have um, been composed of ossicles. So think of your think of like you're stacking up lifesavers, and that's what the stalk or the column of a crinoid would look like. And on the top of the crinoid would have been a, a cup or the crown, and they would have been able to feed. These were also filter feeding organisms. And so you can find crinoids and things like that in Virginia and also in West Virginia as well. We also find an abundance of plant fossils. So during the Carboniferous, um, you actually had a had a deltaic swamps that covered um, Virginia. And so you have a lot of fossils of plants, ferns, lycopsids and things of that nature um, on the edges of these swamps. And so you find a lot of shale and a lot of uh, different types of fossils from this time period. So that's gonna be end of part one. We touched on the Paleozoic fossils and the Paleozoic geology of Virginia, but now we're gonna start to get into the Mesozoic or the age of reptiles, better known as the age of dinosaurs. And so fossils from Virginia, part two. And so we have to look back at where we can find those types of fossils and those types of rocks that date back to the Mesozoic. And you're gonna find them in the Piedmont section as to where that dinosaur footprint is from the Triassic, Jurassic, and also Cretaceous. You'll find dinosaur uh, footprints and other fossils that date back to the Triassic. And so during the Triassic period, there was a supercontinent of Pangaea that started to break up. And this breakup actually created the Atlantic Ocean or the Proto-Atlantic Ocean. In fact, this was actually a failed rift. So the East Coast of North America and the East Coast of Africa, they actually started to split off from each other during the late Triassic to early Jurassic periods. And they actually started to open up a different, a brand new sea. And we call that the Proto-Atlantic Ocean. So it failed once, but you eventually would create that separation and would eventually reform the Atlantic Ocean as we do today. And so Virginia was populated by a very different variety of creatures. Um, many of these creatures happened to be early reptiles and other different types of animals, including the early dinosaurs. And so there was a river system uh, or a mudflat that actually used to that actually used to be present in Virginia around 200 million years ago. And so this was likely what Virginia looked like over that time period, around 240 million years ago, where you have a variety of different types of organisms, including some of the early dinosaurs. So in 1989, uh, the Culpeper Stone Company um, was actually able to use stone um, in order to create uh, buildings and houses and things of that nature. Um, and they uncovered an incredible set of tracks from a variety of different creatures, including dinosaur footprints. Um, these are these tracks are over 210 million years old, and there were over 5,000 tracks that have been discovered in this quarry. And so this is the quarry here, which is located in Culpeper, Virginia. And every year, this quarry opens up to visitors, and you can actually see where 
animals, including dinosaurs, left their tracks along a muddy shore bank 210 million years ago. So we find a variety of different types of footprints. Um, one of the footprints that we see is an animal called a phytosaur. Um, phytosaurs are like these crocodilian-like creatures that look very much like crocodiles, but we call these we call these animals archosaurs. And they were made by an animal, likely an archosaur, but the footprint is called a patopus. Now, we don't definitively know if this animal was a phytosaur or not. When we look at trace fossils, the study of trace fossils is called ichnology. Um, when we look at trace fossils, it's really hard to tell what the trace maker was. And so we can look at comparison of the trace maker and we can kind of give it a kind of compare the, the trackway to the animal that potentially made it. And we can kind of, kind of come up with the basis if the animal made it or not based upon the structure of the foot. And so just like, you know, animals in the animal kingdom get their own names, well, trace fossils get their own names as well. We call that an ichnogenus, an ichnogenus and an ichnospecies. The ichnogenus for this track is called a patopus, and it was likely made by a phytosaur-like animal. And so this is found in the uh, Lakatong Formation in Pennsylvania, and it actually does preserve footprints. This track doesn't necessarily come from Virginia, but we do find um, animals that made these tracks in Virginia as well, as we don't just find the animals, I'm sorry, we don't just find the footprints, but we do find the bits and pieces of bones and teeth from phytosaurs and the, the Triassic rocks in Virginia as well. So here's another track that we actually see. Uh, we call that a growlator. Growlator was likely uh, a small meat-eating dinosaur, or the tracks were likely made by a small meat-eating dinosaur. Most likely, probably from a coelophysis, which is a dinosaur found in the like Triassic rocks. Um, so this is a common footprint that we actually see um, in the a formation that we call, or the unit that we call the Newark Supergroup, which is where these rocks come from. We also find tracks from large meat-eating dinosaurs. And so this one is called Kenyatopus and Hubrontes. So these were likely made by a large meat-eating dinosaur, maybe Dilophosaurus. We're not exactly certain if Dilophosaurus made the tracks, but this was likely made by a large meat-eating dinosaur, often associated to being made by Dilophosaurus. So these were really early dinosaurs. We, during the late Triassic, we really don't see small dinosaurs. We see small dinosaurs like Coelophysis and other different types. But right until we get into the early late Triassic to early Jurassic boundary, we start to see an increase in size in some of these meat eating dinosaurs, including things like Dilophosaurus, which lived during the early Jurassic. It kind of has the slender shape of Coelophysis, but much bigger in size. We also see tracks from uh, large crocodilian-like creatures um, that we call Rausukians. Um, some of you may be familiar with Postasuchus, and we do find things like Postasuchus or tracks from Postasuchus in the Triassic rocks of North Carolina, including the Triassic rocks of Virginia. Um, we call these tracks called Brachychiratherium, are the names associated to these trackways that were likely created by these Rausukians, which were the top predators during the Triassic period. And so now we were done talking about the Mesozoic rocks. I failed to mention the Cretaceous rocks. I couldn't find too much information on them. And we don't really have a lot of fossils that are found within those Cretaceous sediments. Most of the fossils that you'll see in the Mesozoic happen to be these tracks, these trace fossils, as well as bits and pieces of plants, as well as bits and pieces of phytosaurs and things of that nature. But now we start to move on to the, uh, to the earliest known rocks that we actually see in Virginia. So we're going to be talking about the Cenozoic era or recent life. So once again, we see fossils in the coastal plains. This is where the youngest sediments occur and the youngest fossils occur. And so during the Cenozoic era, the sea level rose and fell, depositing sediments at different times. And so Various different types of, of fossils are found in within those layers because they were deposited at various different times. Um, as the sea level uh, withdrew and then came back, we see a variety of different types of sediments and formations that get preserved within the rock record. 
And so we actually find teeth um, of Megalodon, or I'm sorry, the ancestors of Megalodon called Otodus obliquus. This is found in the, the Nam, Nam Jimoy formation, um, which is part of the Patapaco group or the Patapaco member. And it's early Eocene in age. And so we actually find ancestors of the big bad Megalodon in this rock unit. We also see an early primate, what we call an, an, an Amomayat, that are found in the Eocene sediments and the Nam Jehoi formation in northeastern Virginia. And this is actually one of the earliest known primate fossils that we actually see in the Atlanta, in the Atlantic coastal plains. Pretty spectacular that we have little small primate-like creatures called Omomayats being found in the Atlantic coast. So these were likely um, little small mammals and that have occurred in some of the Eocene rocks. Um, the same fossils can be also found in a lot of the Eocene rocks in Virginia, I'm sorry, in Mississippi. But Omomayat fossils, or these teeth rather, can be discovered in some of the coastal sediments in the Atlantic, co in the Atlantic coastal plains. So most fossils that you'll typically see in Virginia likely come from the Miocene and Pli Pliocene sediments. So this is known as the Chesapeake group, and it is completely rich in fossils. So this is actually a picture of the Horsehead Cliffs in Westmoreland State Park in Westmoreland, Virginia. And so the state fossil in Virginia is a scallop called Chesapectin jeffersonia is a very common fossil that you can find along the uh, Atlantic coastal plain sediments. And so it's actually the first fossil described in North America named after um, the third president of the United States and the founding father, um, Thomas Jefferson. So fossils of these can be very common and they're quite large. I mean, some of these are about the size of your hand. Just to give you a scale here of a picture of a Chesapectin, um, they're pretty big shells. Not all of them are big, but you'll typically see them. Um, most of the fossils that you'll typically see are, are quite large. They're about hand size. But the most fossil that everybody wants is the Carcaracles megalodon tooth. Um, these teeth are what collectors really want. They really want the big Carcaracles megalodon. And so this particular megalodon tooth was found along the southern side of the Potomac River in northeastern Virginia. So this is a very common fossil. And then here is our few fossils that you can find along the Chesapeake Bay area. And also in Maryland where the Calvert Formation is, um, you can find whale fossils. You can find a variety of different types of bones from cetaceans like porpoises, a variety of different types of shark's teeth, um, crocodilian-like teeth, as well as large baleen whales. So we're talking a variety of different types of really cool fossils that you can find along the, uh, the coastal sediments in Virginia and Maryland. So that's all I have for you on Virginia paleontology. Um, Virginia is a state that I haven't gone to yet, but I find the geology and the paleontology to be absolutely fascinating. I mean, we have rocks that go as far back as 1.8 billion years and a fossil record that goes as far, that goes as far back as 500 million years. And not just that, but we actually actually have dinosaur tracks. We have dinosaur footprints. Um, and I find that to be very cool. So one day I would love to go to the coal pepper quarry and maybe look at those dinosaur tracks. I mean, talk about walking with dinosaurs. I find that to be awesome. And then, you know, if you don't live around the area where those tracks are found, you can always go along the Atlantic coastal, Atlantic coastal sediments and pick up fossils um, like whales and shark's teeth and... Uh, your state fossil of Virginia, Chesapeake and Jeffersonians. And so while other people are going collecting fossils, I, I really hope that you guys enjoyed um, the talk I had for Virginia fossils. And I hope you guys uh, will tune in to some more of my videos. Thank you so much.